Okay, so now let's move on to the next section, which is about client server models. What I want to do in this section is to talk a bit about general principles, what a client server model is, and then to talk through a particular example of what we call a frequency server. So a client server model typically is, is as illustrated here. We have a single server which provides services to a number of different clients. Um, the clients use, use um, resources provided by the server in some sense or another. And the typical interaction we have between clients and, and the server is that a client sends a request message to the server and the server replies to that, providing a service or handling a, handling a, a um, resource. So typically this is a message passing interface so the client sends a request message of some sort um, to the server and a reply is sent back to the client. Now typically this sort of message passing is hidden in a functional interface. If you remember when we talked, um, when you first introduced concurrency, we looked at the example where we sent from the shell bare sends and, and receive expressions in the shell. But we saw very quickly that it was much more elegant, it was much clearer to hide those, um, that message passing behind a functional interface. And we'll see that in the example we look at here. Um, and it's, it, in a typical client server system, there are two models. One is an asynchronous model where a client can issue a request and doesn't need to wait for a reply before it continues. Or the synchronous model where a client issues a request and waits um, synchronously until it receives a reply to its request. Now let's take a look at an example. What we see here is the clients are mobile phones um, and they are requesting from a server a, a, an allocation of a particular frequency. Um, and this behind the server perhaps it's a database or some sort, of, some sort of mass storage. But as far as we're concerned here we have a number of client processes which will send messages to um, a single server process which will reply to those. And you can see that two sorts of messages get sent. A client can ask for a frequency to, frequency to be allocated and typically in that case they will get a reply which says okay here's a frequency. They may get a reply saying error I've allocated all my frequencies. That's a possibility. But what we would hope is that in most cases, a client will indeed get a frequency allocated to them. The second case is one where a client who's had a frequency allocated to them says, I want to deallocate this frequency. And what we would expect is for the reply from the server to be, OK, that's done. So there we see this, um, this interface. And in this case, what we've got is a, is a synchronous behavior that the client will um, will wait for a reply. And here we see a typical uh, message sequence chart for the client and server. We start off by the client sending a request. It says, I would like a, a, a frequency. Here's my PID. And the, um, the third part of the message is allocate. So it's saying, I would like a frequency. And then what we expect to see is a reply. So wrapped up in a, a tuple beginning with reply is either the tuple OK frequency or the tuple error, no frequency. And then subsequently what we might see is a request, again from the same client PID to the server saying, could you please deallocate the frequency I've got? And there's a reply from the server saying, OK. So there we see the, the pattern of messages, the flow of, of um, messages between the client and the server, or between a particular client, because there will be a number of clients but for each of them, we'll see a similar pattern of interaction. Just before we talk about um, the, the structure of the, uh, the code itself, I just wanted to remind you of the uh, process skeleton that we saw in the section on concurrent programming, that a typical pattern for a, um, a process, and in this case, a typical pattern for a server process, is that we... Um, we start the process by calling spawn, or as we've seen 
just now, perhaps spawn link. And then we initialize the server in some way by setting up the initial state. And then we loop. And what we do in the loop is receive messages and handle them in an appropriate way. And then for some messages, some message will, will cause the, the loop to terminate. And when we do that, we clean up and then terminate. So that's the, remember, that's the uh, skeleton we've seen before. Let's have a look at what the code for the uh, frequency server looks like. Well, here we can see what are the, fun the functions that we, um, we export from this. Well, we export start and stop, we export init, and also an allocate and deallocate function. Now let's have a look at what's happening, first of all, in the start. Um, what we're doing here is we're going to spawn the whatever's in the init function. So this is precisely as we saw in the template. And then we're registering that process as um, calling it frequency. And what we do in the init function is we set up um, some initial frequencies. In fact, what we do is we uh, our state here is a pair of lists the list of frequencies which are not allocated and frequencies which are. And so we initialize this with the frequencies 10 up to 15 as being unallocated and an empty list of already allocated frequencies. And then what will happen is that we will loop through that. So the server, that's the server's state and each iteration of the loop will we'll see that state change in some way. Um, now, the client functions, we have a function which uh, we call to, to stop the server. We have a function we call uh, to allocate and a function we call to deallocate a particular frequency. We've put those behind a single, um, a single function called call. And what call does is send messages to the server. So let's have a look at what call does with a particular message. Um, what it does is whatever the message is, it sends that message wrapped up with the atom request and the PID of the client together with the message gets sent to the frequency server. And then what we do is we receive replies which are wrapped up in a reply um, tuple. We pull off that initial atom and then return simply the, um, the second component there. So what call does is um, is just send messages to messages of a particular form to the frequency server and process the response. That's a synchronous call. We send a message and wait to receive the result. And the reply function, what we've done here is wrap up inside a, a functional interface, sending a reply message to a particular PID. So instead of saying PID pling, uh, reply paired with a particular message. We call the function reply with that PID and message. So those are going to be used, the reply is going to be used by the loop. Let's see what the loop does, because this, this is where all the work goes on in, inside the frequency server. And you can see that there are three sorts of message we can send. We can send a, um, we can send a request to allocate a PID, a request to deallocate a particular frequency, and a request to stop. Let's look at the stop case first. What happens in the stop case is we simply reply OK to the client and terminate. So that indeed terminates the loop. In the other two cases, we will have a tail call. As the last thing in our body, we will call the loop again. So let's have a look at what happens in the, um, in the allocate case. Well, what we do is we generate a new, uh, new frequencies data, that's allocated and unallocated frequencies, and a reply by calling the function allocate. And then we send the reply back to the, the client, and then we call the, the loop with that new set of frequencies which have been allocated and deallocated. And we do a similar thing in the deallocation case. So we handle those, um, those particular messages to allocate and deallocate by calling these local functions allocate and deallocate. So the final bit of the jigsaw here is to define those functions. And what we do here, we see a bit of pattern matching. Um, if you remember that the 
frequencies is a pair of two lists. The first list are, is the list of frequencies that are not yet allocated, and the second is those that are already allocated. And we pattern match on that first list. If that list is empty, then all we can do is keep the frequencies as they are and send a reply saying, error, we've got no frequencies left. On the other hand, if there are some frequencies left, what we do is we pattern match on a non-empty list and the first element in that non-empty list is, becomes the allocated frequency and the remaining frequencies um, stay as free and we make sure that the, the one we've allocated goes now into the allocated list. In the case of deallocation, we use a library function from the uh, lists library, which is used to, uh, as you can see in the previous example, what happens is that we store frequencies which have been allocated together with the PID to which they were allocated. We use key delete to ensure that we delete the frequency and its allocated PID from the list of allocated frequencies and then put the freed frequency into the list of unallocated frequencies. So here we're doing, it's these, it's on these two, in these two functions, what we're doing is manipulating the state data, moving things from free to allocated and vice versa. In the, but in the previous examples, what you see is this pattern of request and response. Send a request of a certain sort, process that request to produce a new piece of state data, which here is the new frequencies, reply and then loop on those new frequencies. And that's very typical of um, server behavior in Erlang. So just to summarize, what we've covered here is a, an example of a client server model where um, the clients are requesting frequencies from a server and the server is allocating and deallocating those as appropriate.